like former Arizona Sheriff Joe Arpaio is one step closer to a presidential pardon. The White House has the paperwork ready to go. President Trump hasn't announced his final decision, but he made his intentions clear in Phoenix. But, but, I won't do it tonight because I don't want to cause any controversy. Is that okay? Arpaio was convicted of criminal contempt for ignoring a judge's order to stop racially profiling Hispanics in Arizona. Instead, Sheriff Joe continued to have his deputies shake down people based solely on their legal status. That continued for two years. Arpaio's defense attorney, Jack Willenschick, joins me now. Good morning. Morning, Carol. Thanks Good for morning. having me. Good morning. Thanks for being here. I do appreciate it. I, I was just wondering, have you heard anything from the White House yet? Not yet. You know what? Uh, we're, we're sitting and just listening and waiting just like everybody else. So when we hear that President Trump has paperwork, like, like take us through the process. How does that work? Sure. Sure. Uh, with a pardon, the, the president has to actually sign a pardon. And uh, legally, it's, it's like a deed. So the president has to sign it. And then it has to actually be delivered to us. And then finally, we have to accept it by filing it in court. And uh, when we do that, we will likely be asking the judge to uh, vacate the case, vacate the conviction, and uh, dismiss it. So isn't this unusual? Usually, usually presidents wait to pardon people until the end of their terms. Why do you think President Trump is acting so fast on this one? I think obviously uh, something about this case has, uh, has really hit a chord with, with the president. Um, you know, in our view, this case has been very political since the, since the start. Um, and the sheriff, of course, has always been a lightning rod for, for controversy and for politics. So it's only right that a case that's this, this, that's this political uh, should have a political end and that the president should, as a political act even, uh, grant a pardon. Well, critics would say that your client thumbed his nose at the Constitution. He disobeyed court orders and then he bragged about it. So. Why is it political, and why does he deserve to be pardoned? Sure, and you know, I'd, I'd like to actually correct uh, something you said in, in the introduction, which is, which, is, which is a common misunderstanding. Uh, this case did not have anything to do with racial profiling, and uh, frankly, had very little to do, in terms of the judge's order, with defying the Constitution. Uh, the, the judge's order in this case said not to hold somebody solely for being a legal alien, and the reason the judge was saying that was that the sheriff's office used to be deputized as federal law enforcement, as federal immigration officers. Uh, that authority was revoked in 2009. So this, uh, the, this case was actually very technical. It wasn't this broad thing about racial profiling, at least not this criminal case. Uh, that, that okay, so, so, think so let, let's say I believe everything you say. I don't want to get into the weeds. The judge still disobeyed sure. the court's order and continued to act in ways that the judge didn't want him to. So Sheriff Joe's a law and order guy. So why didn't he just obey the judge's yes. order and save the fight for another day? That's a great question, and that's why we, we want a jury trial, because the order wasn't clear. Uh, what the judge's order said was, it said, look, you guys are no longer deputized to be federal law enforcement, and therefore, we don't want you acting like federal immigration officers. We don't want you acting like federal law enforcement. So when the sheriff's office saw that, they said, well, okay, but, you know, surely this doesn't mean we can't even cooperate with, with federal immigration. We can't even turn people over to Homeland Security, which is what they continue to do. That's a common practice. And that's what the sheriff was just convicted of criminal contempt for. Something that's a common practice by law enforcement agencies across the country, which is if but, you but have someone in your judge custody... But still, judge ordered the sheriff to stop doing it. And, you know, if, if, if I disobeyed a judge's order, they'd throw the book at me, too. Not, in, not if it was an unclear order. And that, that's an element of criminal contempt. And our problem was trying to tell that to the judge is, was, was, was never going to work. Uh, trying a contempt of court case to the judge, it's like trying a crime to the victim. Uh, the judge is, is just has a lot of difficulty in being independent. And well, well, at look, the end of the day, I, under, I, I understand where you're jury. going because it was Obama's Justice Department that ordered this investigation into Sher Sheriff Joe Arpaio's methods in Arizona, right? But Sheriff Joe made it political, too. It was actually too, the, the because judge that ordered it. Well, I understand that, but Sheriff Joe made this political, too, when he insisted on conducting a five-year investigation into President Obama's birth certificate, right? There's a lot of politics in this case. I, I don't disagree. And that's why I think uh, for politics to, to come in here at the end of the day and put an end to this case, uh, it, it's sort of a just ending to it. Um, all right, I'm going to have to leave it there. Jack Willenchek.
Thank you so much for being with me this morning. Thank you.